check this out. I love this component. Q dash splitter. And then we can model here. V dash model is equal to splitter. And this is going to say how much of the splitter in terms of a percentage the left side is taking up. I'll show you what I mean. Con splitter is equal to a ref. We'll pull in ref and set that equal to 50% by default. Save it. And we don't see anything. So let's say class is equal to full width. And we might have to give that a height as well. How about style is equal to height. And I might say 500 pixels. There we go. So we've got our splitter. And now we can move it left and right. So to actually put content inside of there, we can now use slots. So we say template and then before. And before is going to give us the left side. There we go. And then we can do the right side as well by saying after. After. And there we go. We've got the splitter showing the before and after sides. Pretty cool. And notice that I've got 50 here. So if I refresh the page, like I said, that's going to be 50%. If I were to set this to 30, now it's going to be 30% by default. In fact, how about we come in here and add a pre-tag and show that value just so we can see what we're working with. And there we go. We go all the way to the right, at least as far as we can go. That hits 90. And then to the left, that hits 10. How cool is that? All right, let's see what else we can do. We can also say before dash class. And I can add something in here. For example, Q dash padding or medium. That's going to add a little bit of a padding in there. And then let's also do an after class just to pad these a little bit. And you know what? Let's wrap this inside of a card. I'll grab all of that, Control Shift P, wrap, Q dash card, save it. And we might want to put a full width on this. Class is equal to full width. There we go. All right, that's going to be a little bit nicer to deal with. So let's see what else we can do. We can also make it so that this emits straight away as we're dragging. So notice that as I drag this, that value doesn't change until I let go. So what we can do is come in here and say, emit dash immediately. Save it. And now it's going to emit as I drag. So that can be good to know if you really need that feedback straight away so that you can deal with it. We can also come in here and say, disable. So maybe, for example, you want to say on a mobile device, disable this splitter, but then on a desktop device, you'll enable it. So you've got a little bit of flexibility over how it can be used and when it can be used. Another thing we can do is tap into the separator. So let's say separator dash class and set that equal to background dash indigo. Now we get an indigo color there and let's say indigo dash nine to make it a darker indigo. Yeah, I think that looks good. Separator dash style is also available to us. So we can say background dash colors, something like, I don't know, hashtag 202020 is going to be a dark gray color and I can get rid of the separator class. And there we go. Now the separator is a dark gray color. So it's a bit more obvious and easier to see. Okay, what else can we do? Oh, something you might want to know is about using the splitter in the whole page. So using up the entire page without getting scroll bars on the bottom. This can be really good to know. So we'll get rid of the card here, like that. I'll get rid of this height, save it, and notice that by default, it doesn't really display properly. I'll also get rid of this pre-tag at the bottom. We don't need that anymore. So because we've got flex center here, it's basically squishing it into the center. So what you can do is just get rid of flex center. And there we go. Now it takes up the entire page. How cool is that? This is especially cool if you want to create an application where basically the user takes control over the areas using the splitter rather than you getting a scroller on the entire page. This can create some really powerful UI experiences for the user. Speaking of which, we can also make this horizontal. Horizontal, save it, and now we've got a splitter that goes horizontally. Another thing we can do is set some limits in place. So let's say limits, and this is going to accept an array. And I wanted to say, don't go any lower than 30 and don't go any higher than 80. So notice that we kind of get stuck here. We can't go past 30 and we can't go past 80. And by the way, by default, this is a 10 and a 90. So we could set that to 0 and 100. And that's going to mean that we can go all the way to the edge on both sides. Hmm, looks like that actually didn't work. Maybe it's because we have content in here. Let's see what happens when I comment that out. Ha! I know the problem. 
It's because we have this padding in here. Let's get rid of that. And there we go. Now we can go all the way through to the edges. So that's kind of cool. But we'll bring that padding back in and we'll get rid of limit and see what else we can do. We can also change the unit. So by default, it is percentage. But if we say unit is equal to px for pixels instead, now I can say, for example, uh, 80 pixels to begin with. So now that's going to be 80 pixels. And then the end is just going to be however many pixels at the end. Now, it's also useful to know in this scenario, we have access to reverse. Reverse. And that means it's going to start from the right side. So trying to figure out the logic of doing this on your own can be really frustrating because you kind of have to figure out the width of the screen and then do some math on that. Or you can just say reverse. And this basically means 80 pixels from the right side. But without reverse, it means 80 pixels from the left side. So that's pretty cool that we get that functionality. Let's get rid of this. Bring us back to 50%. And what else can we do? Well, we can also tap in to the separator. So let me just bring these back in. And there we go. We've also got another template here for the separator. Template, hashtag, separator. And now I can put something inside of here. So there we go. Now I can drag something there. However, you would usually have something like a Q dash avatar. And I like having an avatar because avatars take up a decent enough amount of space. So it's kind of obvious and easy to grab onto. And then we can set an icon there equal to something like drag underscore indicator. And there we go. Now we get this avatar that we can drag. And once again, I like avatar because let's just set this equal to a color like blue. Yeah, it means we've got all of that area that we can grab onto. And you might even choose to keep that entire color in there and say text dash white. Oh, maybe that needs to be a class. How about this? Class is equal to text dash white. Yeah, there we go. And then maybe you could also say the size is equal to extra small. Yeah, or maybe even just like a medium size there. There we go. I think that's pretty good. You can throw whatever you want inside of there for the separator. Now, the last thing I want to show you is really, really cool. This is basically Q splitter inception. You can have a splitter inside of a splitter inside of a splitter as much as you like, which means we can create some really interesting UI experiences. So check this out. We'll come in here and say splitter right. So a splitter for the right side. And now let's come up and put a splitter inside of this template here. In fact, we could grab all of this. So let's copy that splitter and put it inside of this after splitter. And then this time, instead of modeling splitter, we will model splitter right. And there we go. And this time we'll make it horizontal. Nice. And the last thing I want to do is remove the padding because it's causing a bit of problems here. So if we scroll up, we can get rid of the padding on those splitters. And there we go. How unbelievably cool is that? It just works beautifully by default. And you can see how it might make sense to basically just use splitters throughout your entire page so that you can create some really interesting UI experiences for your user. So there we go. That's the splitter component. I've actually built some apps in the past where most of the UI is using splitters to basically, basically structure everything. And then the rest of the app is you know just a whole bunch of quasar components sitting inside of these splitters and in fact let me just spend a moment showing you something like that if we jump into the main layout here what i do is i often change this from a toolbar into a bar and not all the time this is kind of a very specific thing uh we might we might get rid of that button in the menu as well yeah let's just have a bar in there and see what happens yeah and then we might get rid of the shadow by removing elevated and you can see how we're kind of making a really interesting UI experience now. And then inside of this bar, I'm kind of going off script now. <laughs> we can say Q dash space, which is basically going to push us from the left side here over to the right. And then I could have a Q dash icon and then, or maybe a Q dash button and set the icon of that equal to close. Yeah. And then how about we make this flat? And we'll also make it dense. 
And there we go. So this is kind of like, this would be really cool inside of an Electron application. And you can imagine that this would then close the application out. And then you could have like a menu up there. So if you wanted a menu, gosh, I'm really going off script here. <laughs> you could have a Q dash button there. Actually, let's copy paste this one. And maybe there's a menu icon. Yeah, there we go. Or we could set it to a label and call it menu. And then when you click on that, it could open up a menu here. So Q dash menu, and then you could have something in here like a Q dash list, and then Q dash items and Q dash item sections inside of there. One, and then you could have like two, and then three, save that. Let's see what this looks like. Yeah, except it's not really displaying properly. Oh, these are meant to be separate items. So Q dash item, and then you could just sort of throw them in as separate items. Let's do one more Q dash item. And then we'll do that one for number two. Yeah, you can do some pretty amazing stuff here. And oh, I really should finish up soon, but we can make that dense. And then we could say separator to have separators in there. Yeah, maybe not separator, but we'll also make them more clickable. So I'll go there, 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 and make these items clickable. Yeah, how cool is this? And then on menu, you can also say auto close so that when you click on one of these, it's actually going to close. So I think that needs to have a dash. Yeah, you can basically like mimic a desktop application and with the splitter component, do some pretty amazing things. So there we go. I'll finish up the video here. I hope you enjoyed this one. I really enjoyed making it for you because I love the Q splitter component. I feel like it can like fundamentally change the way we build web applications and allow some super rich experiences for the users that gives them the flexibility to build things and change the UI into ways that they want to use the UI. So you can even imagine up here, maybe you've got like a, a view button in this menu and then you can change what's visible so you could like hide this left menu here hide the bottom one so that it just shows this menu and do all sorts of interesting stuff like that but anyway i'm rambling now hope you enjoyed this one and i'll see you in a future video bye for now